bipartisan action to combat child abuse and exploitation. A report of child abuse is made every 10 seconds in this country. And human trafficking, human trafficking is one of the world's fastest growing crimes. While worrying comes naturally for parents, it is staggering to consider the different forms that child exploitation can take. It could be a coach or someone close to you, or it could be a total stranger on social media acting alone as part of a global operation. Together, Republicans and Democrats are taking action to protect the most vulnerable and to punish those who abuse them. With these initiatives, we will go after child sex offenders, and we will make sure that survivors have the highest protection under the law. Second, ahead of Memorial Day, we are tackling bipartisan uh, challenges, and we're taking bipartisan action to help our veterans and their families. It is especially good news that we are making progress on fixing the long-standing problems with the VA claims backlog. So many of us in Congress have been working on this for so many years, dealing with our own constituents and their problems. Veterans got bills to pay. They have families to support. The last thing they should have to deal with is endless bureaucracy. Unfortunately, that's what's gone on with the VA with this claims backlog. So if you've been involved in Congress working on these caseworkers, it is just heart-wrenching to see a veteran who needs health care get stuck in this claims backlog. The initiative that the po House passed this week with bipartisan unanimous support will expedite the process so that veterans can get timely decisions and have real peace of mind and we can get rid of this claims backlog. Lastly, I want to talk about a very important health care report. It's a report um, from the Department of Health and Human Services. It's the ASPE data point report. The Department of Health and Human Services has released an analysis that says that since Obamacare went into effect, average premiums have more than doubled nationwide. Since Obamacare went into effect, average health care premiums have doubled nationwide. Remember, remember when President Obama promised that his health care plan would lower the typical family's premiums by up to $2,500? Under Obamacare, average premiums have gone up by nearly $3,000. This law did not drop premiums by $2,500 as promised. Average premiums have gone up by over $3,000, by nearly $3,000. Just yesterday, a new shoe drops every week on Obamacare, it seems. Just yesterday, Blue Cross and Blue Shield announced that it will pull out of 32 counties in Kansas and Missouri. This will affect 67,000 people. Citing all the losses that it had taken over 2016, the company said, and I quote, this is unsustainable. This is exactly why we are on a rescue mission. Between premiums surging up and choices going away, Obamacare is on an unsustainable path. Look, the Blue Cross Blue Shield plans, they're the nonprofits. They're typically the last plan standing in a market. And when they're pulling out of states like Kansas and Missouri, we have a serious problem on our hands. This law is in the middle of a collapse. We need to bring down the cost of coverage. And we need to revitalize the market so that people have real choices and real access to affordable health care. That's what our plan will do. So we're happy to get you a copy of this report if you need it. Or if you want, you can just go to hhs.gov and see it for yourself. Uh, questions? Given what happened last night, should Greg Gianforte withdraw from the Montana health race? Well, first, let me just say, physical altercations are, there's never a call for physical altercations. There is no time where a physical altercation should occur with the press or with just between human beings. So that is wrong and it should not have happened. Um, should the gentleman apologize? Yeah, I think he should apologize. Um, I'm I know he has his own version and I'm sure he's gonna have more to say, but there's no call for this, no matter what, under any circumstance. The people of the state of Montana are gonna decide today uh, who they will send to Congress. If, if he wins, he has been chosen by the Montana, the people of Montana, who their Congress is going to be. I'm going to let the people of Montana decide who they want as their representative. That's not our choice. That's the people of Montana who choose that. Brad. Or, or Jake. Jake. Jake, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, Chad. Chad, Jake, then Chad. Yeah. 
you have the choice whether he's a part of your conference, that is a choice that you guys are going to make to accept him or not. Is that just a the, 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 the choice will be made by the people of Montana. I do not think this is acceptable behavior, but the choice will be made by the people of Montana. Chad. Explain something to me here. So you held, you had it set the health care bill to the Senate, waiting for a CBO report. You got it, you said to me yesterday, good news. Why, though, do we hear so many rank and file Republicans basically beating the little car out of the CBO? I mean, you were the budget committee chair, and, and I understand the issues. By the way, way I I've seen both parties beat the living tar to CBO over the years. As you know, I've been doing budgeting around here for a long time. Uh, I think what it is is um, the the twenty three million dollar claim is is there's a lot more to it than what that sounds like. What I'm encouraged by is the fact that CBO said yes, we hit our budget target and then some. So the bill is clearly in client in compliance with um, reconciliation instructions. Number one, number two. What I'm encouraged is what the CBO says is we're going to be able to drop premiums. We're going to give the states like Wisconsin flexibility to get premiums down. Look at what just happened in Missouri and look at what just happened in Kansas. We see a law that's collapsing. We see a new study that just came out yesterday from HHS saying premiums have doubled in America because of Obamacare. People can't afford this. And so what CBO just told us is the reforms that we put in this bill will help lower premiums. And so I'm very encouraged by that. But I think what what members are frustrated with is what's behind the CBO analysis about who gets insured and who doesn't get insured. If you leave it up to a person's choice, then they'll make a choice. If the government's going to stop forcing people to buy something that they don't want to buy, then they won't buy it. And that's basically what CBO is saying. And I think the lack of clarity on that point is what has members frustrated. Why didn't people like people embrace though the budget? The, the, the I, I think I just answered your question. Reduction is important. Your side really embraced that, but then when it came to twenty-three million, they said, "Oh no, no, those yabby was done." Well, I, just, I, just, I just, I just explained it. Yeah. It did find that premium on average would go down, but it also found that in the market that employed the waivers, they believe that there might not be any premium access, any access for, for the So I, obviously I disagree with that. Let me explain what this means, just so people... So would go up for older and if, 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 if a state takes a waiver, then a state, in order to get that waiver, has to have a risk system in place. We have experience with this where I come from. We had a risk pool. Maine had great experiences. They had risk sharing. So a state has to have a risk system in place. And that risk system is specifically designed to make sure that people with a catastrophic illness, somebody who, who has a pre-existing condition, gets, also gets access to affordable health care. And what we have learned through experience is if we target resources at the state level and at the federal level to help make sure that we subsidize catastrophic illnesses, what you end up doing is you lower the premiums for everybody else. We think that's so much smarter. What Obamacare tried to do is force younger, healthier people to pay way more for their health insurance than they other, otherwise would have paid, and that would cross-subsidize everybody else. Guess what? It didn't happen. It didn't work. They're not buying the health insurance, and as a result, the health insurers are collapsing. Blue Cross Blue Shields pulling out of Missouri and Kansas. Aetna's pulling out nationwide. Iowa has nothing left. There's no plans left in Iowa because Obamacare collapsed, and it is collapsing. And so what we're saying is let's just be smart about this. What do we want? What do we all want? We want everybody who doesn't get health care from either Medicare or Medicaid or from their job, it's about 11% of Americans, we want them, too, to get access to affordable health care. And we think the smart way to do this is don't force young families to overpay for their health insurance because we're finding out they're not. They won't just buy it. Let's let people buy insurance that's priced competitively, give people more choice, have more competition. Let states be innovative like my own state was before Obamacare. And then let's just direct support directly to the people with catastrophic illnesses. Let's, let's subsidize those who have these severe illnesses so they get affordable, comprehensive coverage they don't go bankrupt if they get sick. And by doing that, we free up the marketplace for everybody else so that they can get even lower premiums. That's what the waiver is all about, giving states the flexibility to do this. And that's why I'm actually comforted by the CBO report, which shows, yeah, we'll lower premiums. We've got two problems we've got to solve here. We've got to get premiums down, 
and we got to make sure that people with pre-existing condition can get affordable coverage. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, uh, I, I, I just explained, I just answered your question. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, the Treasury Secretary called for a clean debt ceiling increase by August. The House Freedom Caucus rejected the idea of a clean debt ceiling increase, but also wants something done by August paired with policy shifts to address the deficit. Where do you stand on this issue? We're talking, talking with our members on this. Um, it wouldn't be every Treasury Secretary says this, and every Treasury Secretary needs to say this. Uh, so I, I expect nothing less from a Treasury Secretary. Uh, they all should say that. They all do say that. And we're going to be talking with our members and with the administration on how we resolve the debt ceiling. Um, the debt ceiling issue will get resolved. Uh, the timing is what I think is the newsworthy thing here. Receipts aren't quite what people thought they were, and that's why uh, uh, Secretary Mnuchin is, is moving the timetable up. So we're looking at that new timetable. Last question. Mr. Speaker, just to follow up very quickly, nice to see you. Thank you. On the Hi, nice to see you. Specifically on the, <laughs> I don't get to hang out here very often. On the CBO specifically, the language that they use when it comes to premiums, it says, despite the additional funding, those sicker Americans would face extremely high premiums. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you ensure those sicker Americans yeah. with pre-existing conditions that they won't be priced out and it won't become unaffordable? Here's what right. I think the CBO report doesn't quite fully get or state is states put their own part of this as well. This is what this analysis, I think, forgets, which is, we are for the first time ever proposing to put billions of dollars from the federal government for risk systems in states, whether it's a risk pool, a reinsurance mechanism, or risk sharing. Now, what's important to note is states do their own uh, part of this as well. So in Wisconsin, for instance, we had an assessment on all the health insurance plans. We had an agreement among providers that they would, we would, they would have a certain fee schedule that they agreed to. Uh, I think Maine had an assessment on all their health insurance plans. The point I'm trying to make is you don't look at the risk share or risk uh, pool idea federal alone. Remember, the states will also do some of the lifting. The states, like in my state, will have an assessment on plans if they choose to do that. They'll have an agreement with providers. And so we will have federal resources and state resources, which taken together will improve the situation. We had a very successful risk pool in Wisconsin. Our, our insurance commissioner, our deputy insurance commissioner, came up and testified as much. It was very successful, and it didn't have a dime of federal spending. It did had no federal money whatsoever. So what we're saying is, let's do even more of that. Let's have these states put together their own risk systems like they had successfully in the past, and let's on top of that add federal financing so that it's even better. That's the point we're trying to make. To, to be very clear about this, you're saying the states will be able to afford to do enough so that the CBO's projection of extremely high premiums yeah. with what the federal government is That's the whole doing, purpose of a risk pool. Take a look at the Maine model. Take a look at the Wisconsin model. Look at what Utah did. Look at what all these other states did. You have to give the states the ability to customize solutions in their areas. The health insurance system, provider network insurance system in Wisconsin is a whole lot different than it is in New York, let alone New Mexico, Texas, and California, or Maine. Give these states the ability to customize support. And now, for the first time ever, we're going to add federal dollars to this because we, think it's just, we just think it's a lot smarter to directly subsidize the care for people with catastrophic illnesses. 1% of the people in the individual market drive 23% of the cost. That's just 1%. So let's just, as a society, agree at the state level and at the federal level, we're going to cover those costs, those extra costs. We're going to put resources in there because if we do that, we do two things. Peace of mind for people with pre-existing condition and catastrophic illnesses. Innovation at the state level so that it can be done the right way so it works in that state. And you lower premiums for everybody else because the insurance does not have to cover that catastrophic illness. It can cover the basic health insurance needs and you stabilize those insurance markets, which by the way, look at where we're looking at right now. Not only is this an unstable individual insurance market, we have a collapsing individual insurance market and that is why this is a rescue mission. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it.